Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of my live tea tasting. I've got a really exciting, uh, a really exciting blend for you today. Well, it's not technically a blend because it's just one uh, one ingredient, uh, but it's a really good one. So I'm really, uh, I'm really excited to, be, to do this one. I haven't done a white tea in a while, and you guys picked it, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start this show with Snowbud. Snowbud is a white tea, and it is out of this world. So I'm going to go ahead and start the process going. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you know, let you guys know how I will brew this tea. It's going to be similar to a green tea. Uh, it's going to be about 180 degrees. Hey, Ma, welcome. Uh, it's going to be brewed at about 180 degrees for about three minutes, um, and it's going to come out really nice. I've had a sample of this before. I believe it was one of the smaller bags, uh, which had like four or five um, cups. So I am kind of familiar with this one, but um, it's it's a really, really good tea. So I'm really excited to, to start this. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open up this package. Oh, I can't wait. Oh. I gotta work out, it's hard to open these things. <laughs> okay, let's see what we have here. First impressions. Oh, yes. I have missed that smell. It's a really, really good one. Uh, it's a very, very, very light green. Hey, Shanna, welcome! What do you mean, cheater? Just because I've had a cup or two before doesn't mean I'm cheating, it's just... It's just my circumstance. I have never officially bought a full uh, package of this, so you know it's 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 a new experience to me, or rather, it's a more extended new experience for me. Oh, so it's like a really fragrant fragrant green, a very uh, light. I don't even want to say grassy because it's not strong enough to be grassy. It's kind of perfumey, actually. Um, it's very close to, to, to jasmine. It's like not as perfumey as jasmine, but a very, very light version of that. Um, and it's really, it's, it's really sweet. Ooh, this is gonna be one of those where I would, I would actually <laughs> spend a lot of time smelling it versus uh, versus tasting it because it helps you uh, savor uh, savor the flavor so to speak oh I can't I can't stop <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead because I hear the um, I hear the water is almost done because it's a green tea and I'm I mean uh, sorry because it's a white tea and I'm brewing it like a green mmm the leaves are kind of big so it's getting stuck in there. I'll, I'll show you guys in a second, but there we go. Yeah, that should do it. Oh, it's really, really low. It's not coming out. Like I gotta, I gotta yell at it or something. Yeah, that's this is good enough. I, I'm not gonna use a whole lot because uh, white teas generally are soft in uh, are soft in flavor, so. It's 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 gonna be more uh, prevalent. You don't need to use a whole lot. So I'm gonna show you guys. Only using that little little bit. It's going to extend a lot. You can see right now. It's long and stringy, and it's gonna be white. I'm gonna actually pull out a leaf or two, uh, just to give you guys an idea. Now you see that it's dried up and uh, and curled and you can see it's it's it hasn't been oxidized I'm trying <laughs> it keeps on going uh, it keeps on unfocusing but you see it's a very light looking leaf um, it's hard to really tell the um, it's hard to really tell the the color on this camera because uh, it looks a little bit darker than it is in person. Um, but it's like a very, it's a, a white, almost yellow, golden, uh, on the side, it, it's, 
almost it, well it's it's white and and uh kind of yellow and on the inside uh, I don't know if you guys remember the uh silver needle with the little white hairs the little white hairs were on the outside this one the white hairs are on the inside um you have to unfurl it to get more of the uh, of the white light flavor of it uh so that's why there was only a uh I think this one might be actually a little bit better. You can see how it's white, almost silver on there. That's the inside of the leaf. Um, on the outside, it's, uh, where is my light? Oh, I, I think it's on, isn't it? Uh, oh, no, it's not. Oops, sorry. It always does that. Like, it catches me off guard. Thanks for the reminder. Oh, this is actually much a much better example because it's bigger. Hey, Carmen, welcome. So you guys see, I'm trying so hard to keep it in focus without getting too blurry, but I don't know, it's hard to tell. Anyway, the, the, the light part where it's uh, curved, crinkled inward is where all the white hairs are, and that's where you're going to get most of, uh, most of the taste. So I'm going to go ahead and start the steeping. Once again, this is going to be at 180 degrees. Not like black teas and herbals, which are at about 212. And we want to keep it understeeped a little bit. So I'm going to set my timer at three minutes. And uh, that's going to give the leaf enough time to expand, uh, but not too much where it can oversteep and you start to taste the uh, the stem and you get that really bitter aftertaste and uh, that's what you're trying to avoid when you make a tea um, I actually had a friend today uh, at work over steep her tea and I felt awful because I should have I should have warned her uh, it was a uh, it was a jasmine blend with uh, peppermint and lemongrass one of my personal favorites and um, she she did it with really really hot water and she steeped it. She forgot how long. And I was like, no, 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 you're not supposed to do that. And I felt bad because I, it was, it was my fault for not warning her uh, to take it out after three minutes. Um, but then I monitored her second cup. And she tasted the difference like that. She's like, oh, this is so much better. I was like, yeah, now now you know oversteeping is a thing. Uh, a lot of people drink tea and not realize that uh, you can oversteep it and it, it makes it bitter. Um, until they taste the difference between the two. Uh, green tea comes out... The oh, wow. that was <laughs> It's Quackhead. Quackhead is telling me that the three minutes are over. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my tea. That was a really fast three minutes. Like, good lord. Time was flying. So, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like now. I'm going to pull out one of these leaves, actually, because you'll be able to see the difference. I'm trying to get a good one. Is this a good one here? Yeah, this is a good one. So, you'll see... There's a huge difference between uh, what it looked like when it was dry and what it was when it would when it got wet. Hey Pam, welcome. You can see that it unfurled a lot. I'm actually gonna put this phone down for just a minute, and I'm gonna show you how much it move. Uh, it uh, it expanded. Oh, got a little bit stuck on my finger. You get to open up the leaf quite a bit. And it extended. It looks like this one ripped a little bit. That's okay. But you see right here, comparing what it was to what it is, there's a huge difference. Now I hope, I always do this. Every time I show you guys, it always drips a little bit more. Hopefully it's not going to drip too much. Yeah, get it out, get it out. All that water, it's its stuck in the leaf. Because it expands so much, it absorbs a whole lot more. Uh, so, I'm trying to avoid the spilling it. Alright, there we go. 
Now it's a little bit of a balancing act holding this thing. All right. So you see there's a huge difference. It looks more like a like a salad, like a seaweed salad here. It became a little bit darker, um, but you see there's still tinges of the the light color. All of that is like from the from the white uh, the white hair that's on the leaf. And you see there's a lot of growth. It's I started off at about here. It was close to the bottom. You see it's nearly it's almost tripled actually because it goes from here. I'd say about double, maybe triple the size. So there was a lot of growth. And that's how you know that this is a really good tea when it starts off small, um, but the expansion... Let me pull this back up. There we go. But the expansion is so... is is so. Uh, well, there's a huge difference between what it starts off with and what it ends up as. Um, that's how much of the flavor is being released when it uh, when when it steeps. So you're gonna see in just a moment um, the way that the way that it comes out. First, I'm gonna show you guys, or rather, tell you guys how it smells. Now, it's, it's not a very when I have the um, when I have the lid on top, it's not a very strong scent. But when you open it, you get more of the uh, you get more of the scent coming out. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. Like it, it's you can't really smell it as much in the water. It's there, but I have to like really get into it. Yeah, that that that's interesting. Normally, if a tea is uh, scented when it's dried, uh, it transfers pretty well when it's wet. But this one, it's it's very very light. Um, with a tea as fragrant as Snowbud is when it's dry, I'm actually kind of surprised you don't you don't get much of the scent when it's uh, after it's steeped. Uh, but we'll definitely have that in the taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of this out. And you're gonna see. You know what? I don't even need the um, I don't even need the 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 tea towel because the water was steeped at a lower temperature so I don't need to worry about uh, burning my hand on the cast iron but as you can see this water is very clear it's very very pale yellow practically not existent there we go and just so you guys know, uh, know I'm still sticking to the uh, unsweetened um, and I don't want to. I don't want to um, mess up the taste any without first having it for myself. So I think this is the first time I'm actually having it unsweetened. Now check that out. That's very interesting. There's very little color. You know, normally it's you have uh, teas that are golden yellow and I mean there's a crown or uh, around I mean a, a, an aura around it um, this tea is very very light um, it's gonna be I it well from what I've had before it's gonna be tasty but you can barely see that it's there even even in person uh, normally uh, the the phone doesn't do the color justice but even in person this is a this is a, a practically see-through tea um, it's kinda like an extremely I, I wanna say almost like well it's like it's like pale like I mean it, it, there's no better way to describe it than just pale water but it's not gonna taste like pale water so here we go, down the hatch. Mmm, that's really good. It tastes, you, you, you can taste the light green, uh, green of the tea, but it's not very, it's not very prevalent. Uh, the water is, it, the water isn't as, um, the, well, the, the, like the tea, you can taste more of the water, but not in a bad way. You know, it's like, if you like a cup, uh, 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 a regular cup of water, you get kind of like a little bit of a saltiness to it, 
but it's it's a sweet salt. It's it's a little bit hard to describe, but it's really good. So I thought that this might be a little bit of a challenge to describe, and I pulled out my uh, my taste wheel again. Uh, so I'll show you guys what it looks like. Oh, come on, turn around. I hate when I'm like all ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Where are we going to go? I would say maybe vegetal. I'll start with vegetal because it's not very... Um, it's not very floral. Maybe it's like a little bit marine because it kind of tastes a little bit like seaweed, but not very strong. So we'll start with vegetal. Um, maybe an aromatic herb. No, that's not working. Hmm. See, it looks like it's a challenge even for the taste wheel. So maybe it is closer to marine. I would say if it's not seaweed, maybe maybe clams. It is a, a little bit of uh, of a saltiness that gives it a uh, that that gives it a little bit of a sea bearing flavor. Maybe I'll say it tastes a little bit like clams. Um, maybe oyster. I wouldn't say shellfish in general because uh, it doesn't have that 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 taste that uh, like lobster and. Um, like lobster and shrimp and crab have. This one is more like on the lighter side. So I would say like the the skin of an oyster or the skin of a clam. Something like that. And I know you guys are thinking, <laughs> you're thinking, what? <laughs> but I mean, that's like the best way, to, that's the best way for me to describe it. Um, because it's, 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 that's just what I'm getting. You know, and they say that everybody... Uh, tastes differently. If you try it, you'd probably taste something different. Um, but right now, the best way that I can uh, that I can describe it is like the like the 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 skin of of an oyster. I know it's a little bit creepy, but <laughs> it's oyster tea. But I like it. So, anybody have questions? Anything you want to throw it at me? Go ahead. Don't be shy. Um, I actually learned something last week about white teas um, during uh, during our tasting. They actually, I've actually found out that uh, white teas um, are more caffeinated than um, than black teas, depending on when the uh, when the bud is picked. Um, now, in this case, I don't know when the bud is is picked. But it's usually picked when um, when it's early on in life uh, for for that particular uh, bud, and I'm assuming because this is snow bud that you're getting the early uh, the early clipping um, because caffeine is a natural insecticide. So when uh, when when buds when new buds are growing and they get that. Uh, they they're attacked by insta uh, by insects. They produce a lot of caffeine, so it, it basically uh, shoes them away, and uh, it helps them survive. So when it's clipped, it's clipped with more caffeine naturally in it, and it starts to dry on the um, well, depending on the uh, on the type of method that they use. Uh, what was that the the guide says to the guide they gave us says to steep white at seven to eight minutes that I don't know if I agree with um, generally because you're not supposed to steep teas um, for very long because you'll start to just to oversteep it um, this one it says three to five minutes I did it at three minutes. Um, maybe I should have done it at five to give it a stronger taste, uh, but generally I like to understeep white tea because it tends to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, delicate. Angel, welcome. What's up? Uh, so it, it, the the white tea because you're clipping it at such an early part of uh, point of its life, it's not going to be as strong as like the the, the full on leaves. I need another drink. 
Yeah, my throat is getting a little bit sore already. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's going to be uh, more naturally caffeinated because the leaves themselves uh, have produced uh, an abundance of caffeine once it's clipped. It stays within the leaf. It's dried, and then when you when you um, well, yeah, yeah, that might work if it's a if it's a lower temperature. Um, I did mine at a hundred and uh, at one hundred and eighty, like a green tea. So, Mickey, welcome. Uh, I I I. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, I did it as a green tea uh, because it's more closely uh, related to that uh, to that stage in life where uh, the higher temperature for five minutes versus a lower temperature at three minutes, um, the green and the uh, and the white are closer in range. <laughs> oh, excuse me, than the white and the black. Uh, generally. Oh no, it's okay, as long as you come, you know, better late than never, and say hi for me. Um, so, okay, like you have four different categories of tea, from lightest to darkest, you have the white, the green, the oolong, and the black. Uh, so, the white to green is closer than white to, to black, because you have green and oolong in between. So I like to steep it a little bit less than that, so it stays... Uh, more loyal to the flavor that you're supposed to get. Um, I honestly think that this could have stayed uh, a little bit longer. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to put it in for a little bit longer. Oh, uh, it's There's not enough water in there. So I'm going to add a bit more. I hope there's enough. Yeah, there's... Just enough. Okay. So I'm going to steep this for five minutes. And we'll see if there's a difference. There we go. So I'm in the mood to experiment today. Why not, right? So while that brews, I'm going to try to finish this off so that um, it doesn't get too, uh, too much time in between. Mm. So, like I'm saying, it's 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 a more it's a more delicate leaf. Uh, when you're drinking this uh, snowbud, the uh, the white tea, it's got a really soft uh, flavor to it. But it's not like jasmine. Jasmine, you get like the fragrance of it, um, and and in this one, it smells really really fragrant. But when you drink it, that fragrance doesn't really pass over. Um, it becomes more of a, of, of a kind of salty seawater, but really, really light on the salt. Uh, you could taste that it's there, but barely. And that's the purpose of a white tea. White teas, um, they don't really have a huge effect on, uh, on the water when they're steeped. Um, unless you oversteep it, and then at that point, you've, you've ruined it. Um, so... We're gonna see if uh, if this makes a difference on the uh, on the second steep versus the first, and hopefully we'll see that there is a difference um, and a, 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 a deeper flavor. Um, I think normally, uh, I, I, I think normally when I when I understeep it, I'm I might be missing out, uh, but I don't notice because I sweeten my tea, so it's for that particular purpose that. Uh, I'm drinking it without the sugar, so that it helps me learn the best way, uh, the best way to steep it. So since this says three to five minutes at 180, I'm doing it at three minutes, and then I'm going to do it at five minutes, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how much of an impact the time has. So in the meantime, uh, I'm going to talk about more of the uh, of the leaf itself. Now I found uh, there was something a little bit interesting about that uh, when we did the silver needle the silver needle was a very straight um, a very straight bud like all it was was clipped uh, processed and I mean it was super super young um, but this one looks like it might have been aged uh, a little bit longer because you don't have the fresh uh, the fresh needle it's still like the needle comes from the bud 
not opening yet. Um, you know how when a uh, a leaf forms, uh, you get the little needle and the leaf curls around it, and as it grows, it starts to unfurl and become a um, and become a full on like it goes from this to this. Now, silver needle gets picked while it's still like this, so it never uh, it, it never naturally opens. Uh, and it's super duper young, so you don't have the uh, all the white hairs that have that have grown out of it. Haven't had the chance to unfurl and um, and curl uh, and curl out. Now in this one, the snowbud is uh, picked a little bit later in life, uh, so it opens up a little, not fully, but it opens up. Um, God, I wish I had a picture. But it opens up about part way, and then it's picked so that it recurls on itself as it dries. So you have you essentially get this kind of effect. So it never reaches the full out spreading, I guess you can call it, uh, the full out unfur unfurling of a uh, of a full leaf, but rather it goes in and out. So, or rather in and out, and then in. Ooh. Quackhead tells me my five minutes are up. Hey Val, welcome. You came just in time to hear Quackhead yelling. <laughs> He's like, time is up, time is up. Okay, there we go. And I, I meant to finish off my, uh, <laughs> my, my first cup by now, but I got busy talking, so I still have a full, well, practically full, uh, full cup. But let's keep on going. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. He's my quack head. <laughs> So as it cools, it becomes more uh, room temperature. You get more of a uh, more of a light seawater. I don't want to say like a freshwater lake, um, but it's not super duper salty. Uh, the health benefits of uh, of white tea. That's a good question. Uh, the health benefits are normally purification. Um, it helps you detoxify your body because the leaf is so uh, is so young, and you get the caffeine running through you. Um, it helps you. Uh, it, it helps your your digestive system. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, metabolism. It helps your metabolism. Uh, it helps you lose weight. Um, not as much as matcha does. I always I always recommend matcha for for losing weight, but for for white tea, it's a really good start. Um, it's detox. It's uh, what else is there? It's good for it's good for circulation. Um, hmm. I I used to know like a whole a whole list of it. Um, it's good. It's good for the heart. It's good for the stomach. Um, I believe it, it's. God, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I, I have to I have to brush up a little bit on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, normally people use uh, white tea uh, for detoxification. Um, and I'm fighting the hiccups. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew it. I tried to stop it, but it wouldn't let me. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's good for it, it's good for. Metabolism and, and everything I just said. <laughs> so the taste is very... You, you, it gets more vegetal the longer it stays in there. And I think that that's a good thing. Because um, the longer it's it's there, you get more of the taste. And you're, you're more aware of it. Uh, when it's hot, it just tastes like hot salt water but I mean I'm not describing it very well because hot salt water doesn't sound very appetizing um, but it is kind of, it's like slightly salty not not too overdone so that you're drinking out of the ocean but rather uh, there's a uh, there's a slight earthy tone to it and I think that that's more accurate than uh, than drinking uh, it's more like more like lake water or river water rather than uh, rather than seawater, if that makes sense. Okay, have a good night. I'll see you later. 
Mm. I want to finish this thing really fast because I want to get to uh, to the five minutes deep. That way, it'll it'll let me know uh, how much of a difference there is. Um, it's 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 going to be an interesting a little interesting experiment because uh, generally I'm not used to drinking Snowbud without uh, without stevia, so I don't know, we'll see. And I want to finish it fast because. <laughs> Like, uh, I, I'm racing my own curiosity, but at the risk of just sitting there and chugging and, and you know, looking like a slob with the baboso coming out, <laughs> I think, I think I'll keep it classy and, uh, drink at my own pace for once. Cause this is going on the internet and, you know, nobody's going to forget that. <laughs> I'll never live it down if I, uh, if I, uh, wind up drooling all over myself. And Lord knows I've already done a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of embarrassing things on my stream already. So, <laughs> what's one more, right? Mm. Oh, that's really good. Now it's I'm noticing like a little bit of a lingering aftertaste. Um, as it cools, it's it's getting to be a bit refreshing. Um, there's not a whole lot of um, of a lingering flavor, but it, it's quick. It's quick, but it's there. And, you know, some people like that. Some people like the fact that the taste uh, lasts a little bit longer. Um, depending on the taste, of course. Because if you get, like, a, an oversteeped tea uh, and you get that soapy, bitter flavor, and that never goes away, you're just like, ah! Not a good look. So this one's got a really, uh, it's got a, a quick aftertaste, but it's not, uh, it's not very strong at all. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Now I'm actually surprised, um, that I'm, I'm, I mean, since it is caffeinated, generally it, it would be affecting me. I mean, normally I don't get affected too much. By caffeine, uh, sometimes it's noticeable when I drink it and it lasts longer throughout the day. Um, this is supposed to be moderately caffeinated, and I am feeling a little bit more energized than when I started. Maybe that's just momentum speaking, um, but it's more of a smooth kind of energetic feeling, uh, which is true for most teas because uh, you get the... You get the, uh, from cough you get the jitters, and you tend to, it, it, it's basically like a punch in the face, and you're like, ooh, I'm up, okay, what do we do now? But this one is more of an awakening of, uh, of awareness. Uh, you get more focus, you get more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you get more, more honed in, I guess you could say on uh, what you're doing so this is that's that's actually what I'm feeling right now like I feel there's a, a, a new effect uh, of the caffeine and it's not really strong at all I'm just I'm energetic but I'm not I'm not jittery mm. now there's a little bit now that I'm noticing there's a, um, Ma, you keep calling me. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a stream. <laughs> She's calling me from, uh, from, from the Facebook messenger. Like, no, don't press that button. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> ah, okay. Anyway. I'm almost done with my cup, and I'm like, I'm trying to finish it fast so that I can start the, uh, the, the, the five minutes steep. That way, <laughs> yeah, she, that's my mom, you gotta, you gotta love her. <laughs> uh, I've, oh yeah, I want to start the five minutes steep before it gets, uh, too cool, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, chug the rest of this down, and, uh, see where it takes me from there. Mm. 
There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this for you guys again. Uh, there might be a difference in color. We'll see, hopefully. Uh, we'll see the effect right away. All right, so there's not a huge difference in the color. I'm going to go ahead and pour this out. Oh, there's a little bit more than I thought. Let me see how much... Oh, yeah, there, there's not a whole lot more. Um, but there is some left. So once I drink maybe a sip or two, I'll just... Uh, I'll just finish it off. So, we had uh, the experience of the three minute steep where it was a little bit, um, <gasps> oh, excuse me. Talking and drinking does not mix well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how people do this for a living. Like there's people who do, uh, tea tastings. Oh yeah. It's, it's a very large cup. And I think that that's my downfall, uh, because like I'm drinking so much of it and like as I'm drinking, I'm gulping and, um, I'm swallowing a lot of air. And I think that that's, that's what makes me hiccup. Um, but eventually, yeah, it catches up with me. But it's okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys the, um, the five minute steep. And there is a definite, uh, a definite difference in the color. I'll show you guys right now. You'll see that there's a lot of yellow in there. Um, the edge is still kind of clear, uh, but the the center has become uh, a lot more golden than the uh, than the first one, which is a really good indication of the flavor. The flavor is going to be uh, a little bit stronger in this one because more of the uh, of the tea was released. I'm also going to show you guys. We're going to see if there's a difference in the leaf themselves. It should have unfurled more. Uh, Trying to pull out an actual, an actual leaf. There we go. Okay. So you see, the leaf has become uh, a little bit darker now and a little bit more wet. Um, I don't know if I can. Hey, you know what? Let me show you. Let me show you guys. What it looks like on the towel. I'm gonna see if I can spread this out a little bit more. Because these are some some really big leaves. But they haven't unfurled quite enough. You see, this is what I was talking about before, the silver needle, where it's open and close uh, where it's closed and remain closed. This is what silver needle usually looks like. Um, this particular bud didn't open up very, uh, very much. It might not have the capability to do so. Uh, it might have been picked at a younger point of its life, um, earlier on. Oh, wait. Oh, now this is interesting. Something just happened. I opened up the leaf. Let me see if I can open up slightly more. And... This is what they were talking about on the tea tasting. That they want to get the two buds. You get the needle here, the needle here, and the leaf here. See, the leaf opens up a lot more. It's, it's actually curled up while I was talking to you guys. Come on, don't be shy. It's hard to, to keep it open, so I'm gonna, my fingers are kind of big, so I'm going to go ahead and do my best to keep it open, but you see it opens up a good amount here. So you have the bud here, the leaf here, and that's what you get with the flavor. There we go. The silver needle, it stays closed, it stays straight, and you get all the... Um, all the flavor from God, that light is just awful behind me. <laughs> it's so all right, let me see maybe that works a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. Um, when you get the uh, the flavor, it's from the silver hairs on the outside of the leaf. This one, 
since it's plucked a little bit later on, um, it doesn't have as much of the white, uh, the white hair on it, but you get an open leaf and you get the bud. So that's what they were talking about, uh, at the tasting. I'm looking for another example where you have more of a leaf here. This one looks like it was cut, uh, a bit. Because it's a little off the top. Um, but then when you open it, you're going to see the the bud inside. I can't quite do it. Not with this one. This one... Oh, oh, oh almost, almost. It's It's in there. I just... My fingers are too big. Yeah, I have one more... <laughs> I have one more leaf to try. Ah, uh, yeah, this one looks like it's a little bit better. It's a bigger leaf. I had to unfurl it a little bit more than usual. But you can see it's a much bigger, uh, much stronger looking uh, looking leaf. So this was plucked at a later period so that it had more time to grow. Oh, let go of my finger. I need it. Okay, so now <laughs> we'll go for the five minutes deep to see uh, if there's a difference in taste. There should be. Yeah, there's a definite difference in the smell. I can uh, I can smell it a lot stronger. It's more, uh, it's more favorite. Uh, it's more uh, fragrant. Was that you found out uh, white tea is antibacterial and antiviral. Oh, I didn't know that. It strengthens the circulatory, yep, as I said, the uh, immunity system, which I knew I forgot to mention. Um, oh, but it's got uh, bones, teeth, and, and healthy skin benefits. That I did not know. Usually I, I attribute that to, like, calcium. Um, there might be something else in the tea. I don't know if there's calcium uh, particularly. There might be because, I mean, it's grown from the earth. But... I don't know what the calcium content would be if it uh, if it was. So that being said, uh, I'm going to taste some of that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I find white tea to be quite interesting. I love. Well, I mean, just in in general, learning about tea is uh, is great. But like, there's something about the the three buds of the white leaf. Uh, sorry, the the three the three. I can't talk. The three. <laughs> The three leaves, uh, I'm sorry, two leaves. That's where I'm messing up. The two leaves of the white uh, of the white tea bud that uh, makes it it makes it more interesting uh, when it's like the the time that it's plucked makes a huge impact on the um, on the flavor. Mm. Yeah. There is a definite uh, difference in the uh, in the flavor of the white tea. Um, now you're getting more of that original. Um, oh, it contains fluoride. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, it contains the fluoride, and I guess you also have like the fluoride in the water. If you're lucky, you know, it's like if you have fresh water that has fluoride in it. Um, but uh, the tea has fluoride, so yeah, I guess it does. It does stand to reason that it would be good for the teeth and the bones and uh, and the skin. Uh, but you know, like I said, it's also good for detox. It's also good for um, uh, for the uh, the ah, circulatory immunity. The pico, yes, the pico. oh no wait, she said peco. I always call it pico, but it's supposed to be peco. Um, I, I'm, I'm never going to get used to saying Pico, but <laughs> to me it'll always be Pico. Uh, but yeah, the Pico ref refers to the length of the leaf, um, and, uh, the reference of how long it was before it was, uh, it was plucked. Pico is the longer, is the longer, longer leaf. Um, I don't remember if there were... <gasps> Uh, there were there were four stages where the where the 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 leaves were separated, um, and Peko was the longest one. I don't remember the other three, um, but the 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 first 
sifting of the smallest grain is practically dust. And that's the one that Lipton uses when they uh, when they sell their tea in bags because that's the easiest one to gather in a bag. So they just buy the tea dust, put it in a bag, and sell it. And that's why that's why I'm not huge on Lipton um, because you're essentially drinking tea dust. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing unhealthy about it. Uh, it's just not a better grade of leaf. So this is actually now, now that I'm drinking it, um, it's more, you, you get more of that perfumey taste to it. Um, it's more fragrant, not as, still not as strong as Jasmine. Um, and Jasmine, I actually heard, uh, I actually learned was a, a very interesting way that it's developed uh, as well. While they're drying the leaves, they actually bring in plants of jasmine that uh, only open up at night and they basically have the jasmine open up and show uh no, well, i don't want to say show they um it flourishes and it, it sends out like the the perfumey scent and the tea absorbs it so you're 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 tasting the strong was it? Oh, white teas can be steeped multiple times, and each time it will be different. Exactly. That's that's what I'm tasting uh, with this second the, uh, the the five minute steep. It's a stronger taste because one, it's already opened up partially, and two, I did it for a longer time, so it's going to pull out more of the flavor. And three, the water now is slightly cooler than what it was when I first started. So you're able to keep it in for a longer time without burning the leaf and without pulling out the um, the flavor from the stem. So I'm not tasting any of that... Um, I'm not tasting any of that bitterness that happens when I, uh, when I generally get the uh, oversteep green tea. Uh, that's not happening with this. Uh, you know what? Let me let me top myself off before I forget, because there is still some in here. Ooh, just a little tiny bit. There we go. Um, but the same can be said about uh, certain other teas too, like Pu'er. Pu'er could uh, oh up to six different steeps. That's that's interesting. I've never I've never tried that. Maybe I'll do that sometime. I don't know. We'll see. If I want to drink uh, six cups of water, I will not cups of water, cups of tea, but like, you know, uh, revolving to see how it comes out each time, that's pretty good. I mean, other teas can do it. There was um, Pu'er can do it, or Pu'er, but there's another one I'm trying to remember. It was, uh, dra no, it wasn't Dragon Well. There was one specifically, I can't remember, it was, it was a black tea. Um, yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, you can do that definitely with pour, uh, because it's already fermented, it's really, really hard to oversteep. Um, but because it's, it's hard to oversteep, you can generally get a nice, um, a nice dark, deep, uh, almost rummy kind of flavor from it. Uh, when I did the pour that 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 first time, uh, I described it as a whiskey barrel, and it's really close to that. Like you get the earthiness and the uh, and the fermentation from from that, and you can do it multiple times because the uh, the leaf is already uh, is is already like fermented, and and you're not going to get the uh the bitterness from the stem because it's already gone it's already been pre-processed mm. so now it's tasting less salty which is something that i notice there's notes of the sea salt but it has gone from uh just salt and water to more of a creamy uh, a little bit buttery, a little bit of a of a buttery flavor 
So maybe I should have done it for five minutes the first time because it tastes like now it's more familiar to uh, to the way that I normally like it. So when I drink this on my own again, because uh, sorry guys, I can't do it every time. I can't show you. Uh, but when I drink it the the next time, I'm gonna keep it for five minutes steep, and we'll see what it we'll, we'll see what kind of effect it has. Uh, I'm assuming it's gonna have more of uh, more of a creamy flavor because that's the flavor that I really loved the first time around. Uh, Snowbud, it's a little bit more expensive than regular uh, the regular teas uh, because of the uh, because of the quality of the leaf and the delicate uh, the delicate nature of it. So this one. It's only what one ounce, and I think I paid like seven or eight dollars versus the seven or eight dollars I pay for an herbal blend, um, and you get three ounces. So it's it's slightly uh, more expensive, not in price, but rather in the uh, in the amount of what seven dollars consumes. Uh, try for a minute longer. I don't have enough water to do it for a minute longer. <laughs> I ran. I, I poured out everything, um, and it's it's gone. <laughs> so, I mean, if you want to hear Quackhead again, I can put him on for you. But I mean, I can't. I, I'm out of water. So maybe maybe uh, maybe next time I do a, a white tea. I'll leave it in for like six minutes. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So, you guys have any other questions while uh, while I drink my next sip? Because I have barely scratched the surface of this cup. You can see it's still still at the top. <laughs> oh, excuse me. No, not this time. Okay. I'm assuming you're talking about Quackhead. I'm fighting the I'm fighting the hiccups, so I gotta drink a little bit of something to make it go away. Oh, for me uh, to experiment on my own? Well, I I, I mean, I, I'll report to you guys if you really want to know uh, what the differences were. I don't mind reporting to you guys because I'm going to do this anyway. Uh, just remind me next week uh, to, to talk about it, and I, and I will. Uh, what food does it pair with? Um, food as in, like, an entree, or food as in dessert. Uh, <laughs> yeah, too much tea. Uh, it happens every week. I get tea drunk. Uh, tea drunk is actually a thing, and, uh, they report it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is the best kind of drunk that you can get, because it's no, there's no lasting effects. Um, it's more of a euphoric kind of drunk. And, you know, you're not going to be uh, slowed down like alcohol. You know, your reflexes aren't, uh, aren't uh, impaired. Your judgment isn't impaired. And if you get pulled over by the cops, you're not going to fail the, the, the breathalyzer. So, it's a win-win all around. <laughs> and you don't have to be 21 to drink it. Quackers. <laughs> uh, actually, saltines might go good with this. Um, I never did, <laughs> I never did answer that question, did I? Uh, let's see, you know, let me drink a little bit, get that, uh, get that brain going. Mmm. So, if I were to drink this, I would say, I would, actually, it might not be so bad with, like, a salad... Uh, maybe tuna, maybe a chicken Caesar salad, I think would go very well with this. Um, because you get like that just slightly salted kind of flavor that would go well with the Caesar dressing. Um, it would go well with the way that chicken is normally seasoned. Um, unless it's like, unless it's like a heavily seasoned fried chicken, um, then I wouldn't, uh, the, the, the fried chicken taste would, would overpower uh, the white tea, but if you're going to keep it, uh, white meat, uh, maybe grilled chicken, uh, fish, uh, something light, um, white rice with, uh, shrimp salad, 
that might go well with the uh, with the vinegar on the uh, on the on the dressing because you you want to keep uh, everything uh, at the at the same level so that nothing overpowers it and you'll be able to experience everything to its fullest. So yeah, that, that that's my answer. Um, uh, maybe even, yep, fish. Um, I don't know. I want to, I want to say pork, but again, it, like, it depends on how you season the pork. Um, bacon is a no-no, but if you do like pork chops as a, God, how do, how do I describe it? Cause I have had pork chops that were so, uh, so light it was at a Jamaican restaurant in uh, in New York. It was uh, it was a, a pork chop uh, seasoned with I don't want to say peanuts, but it was a kind of nut. Maybe it was like an almond. Uh, it was it was really good, really light flavor, really tender. Uh, this tea would go very well with that. Maybe with a side of white rice, uh, some salad. You want to keep everything uh, under the same tone. Oh, I'm getting a little bit. A little bit stuffed up. And I don't know why that happens. Like, I never have this problem during the day. And then when I uh, start streaming, it's like everything starts coming out. It's really bad. Murphy's Law at its finest. <laughs> so, as far as desserts, I'd say sugar cookies... Um, I don't know if you'd consider saltines a dessert. Maybe snack. If you're going to have it with a snack, saltines, potato chips, uh, regular flavor. You know, like uh, sea salt. Ve I actually had some sea salt vegetable chips uh, earlier today. And it was, it was really good. It was like a nice, crispy flavor. Very light on the salt. Um, the vegetable you barely tasted... Uh, but it's good for a light snack. So this would pair well with that. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think that's pretty good. Well, yeah, like, I, I can't think of any other, uh, of any other foods that'll go well with. Oh, um, what's that, that, Shanna, what's that, uh, that cookie, that the 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 English cookie, like you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? The um, oh, I'm brain farting. You know, you, you're gonna tell me in like three seconds while I'm drinking. I'm gonna be like, oh, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's gonna be that um, that flavor. Actually, you know what? Maybe. Maybe pancakes. That might not be such a bad idea. Sure thing. Have a good night. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm 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 almost done myself. Shortbread. Yes, shortbread. I always I brain fart. <laughs> shortbread cookies. That is definitely uh, gonna be good with it. Tea knowledge. Yes. Is very knowledgeable. No, I, I I was trying to make a tea pun with that, but nothing came out. <laughs> nothing comes to mind. Yeah, this is this is me at my uh, tea drunken best. <laughs> so have a great night, and I'll see you on Monday. So I'm almost done with my second cup. Uh, you guys have any questions? Anything you want to talk about before I turn in? Um, I'm going to make a, uh, a couple of announcements now. Uh, we're still having the polls um, for the upcoming streams, so I'll be posting that again next... I think I've been doing it on Wednesdays, right? Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to be uh, dropping some new polls. Um, I also want to encourage all you guys... I mean, I get a lot of people who message me um, privately about, uh, about the Facebook group saying, you know, is it okay to, uh, to, to put this on there? Or somebody would send me a link um, and say, hey, I think you'd like this. I'm like, yes, I would. <laughs> I would love that. Put it on the group. Share it with everybody. And I just want to make the official announcement, 
it's okay. You know, I mean, this group is not just my group. It's your group. You know, I want you to be free with it. I want you to be open. I want you to contribute all you like because that's part of the community. You know, you, you, you express yourselves. You show your humor. Show uh, what you find. I'm always going to say, yes, I'm interested in what you have to say. So, yeah, go ahead. Put everything you want on there. You don't need my permission. You don't need my um you don't need my my censorship i'm not gonna say uh you know this this is i mean unless it's like way out there perverse kind of uh kind of a kind of a thing i'm okay with it i mean you guys know me well enough to know that i'm very laid back um if it gets to the point because that, that if we get a whole lot of trolls at that point We'll, uh, we'll start vetting our, um, oh, excuse me, vetting our submissions, but honestly, go for it. <laughs> it's, I, I am that laid back. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, yes, by all means, we'll, we'll, we'll have to do that. Um, so yeah, and, and as well, not just us, but you guys, everybody that's watching, all three of you, <laughs> and the more people that, that show up later, the more people who, uh, watch this stream on YouTube, please, share, show me what you got, you don't need my permission, I want to see it. Um, I think that's it as far as, uh, as far as announcements. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything. So if I do, I'll, I'll show you guys on the, uh, on the site, um, as well. You know, I mean, it is what it is. You guys continue motivating me. Uh, you guys continue to, uh, keep me going. And, you know, I, I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, I'm going to take another sip because I'm, I'm kind of dry. <laughs> but here we go. Yeah, number one content uh, content is best on the community. That's all I gotta say about that. Um, oh, and I'm drinking that. Like the colder that it gets, the more creamy it gets. It's got like a little bit of a uh, of a film, but it doesn't stick long. So there's, there's like a little bit of a texture thing, but it's not that bad. It's not bad at all, actually. I, I say not that bad as in, like, there is something bad. No, it's it's not. It's 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 really good. So, anything else? I only have, like, about two or three sips left. Maybe. Oh, I am so stuffed right now. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't such a great idea to have two... Uh, to refill my pot, but you know, it, it was worth the experiment to find out that now you get like, I mean, logically you'll get a, um, a stronger flavor when you keep it in longer. Um, but I'm glad that it didn't, that, that it didn't oversteep. I'm glad that I'm not getting a bitter after, uh, aftertaste. Um, it's actually, it's actually pretty good. It's peaceful for a caffeinated drink, you know? I'm down to one sip. Last call. Any questions? Any comments? Anything you want to say? Now's the time to do it. Oh, I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit congested. So, note to self: this is not good for sinuses. Sometimes teas uh, drain you. This is not one of them. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, great seeing you guys once again. Uh, I'll be posting it, and next week you guys will tell me what uh, what teas you want to see. And I'll, I'll do it again as usual. All right? Have a good night, everybody. I'll see you next week.